Okay, so now we have the, uh, the equations we need to think about, uh, about the dynamics in the solo model, the solo growth model. So on the, on the x-axis here, we're gonna write little k. So that's physical capital per unit of human capital. On the y-axis, we're gonna have both investment or output um, and, uh, and then break-even investment. Currently, we just have investment and break-even investment. So let me, um, let me rewrite this equation. Little k dot t is equal to s of little y t minus delta plus g plus n times a little k of t. Okay, so why do we call this break-even investment? That says that if you want to maintain the same level of little kt, how much investment do you need? Well, you need this much investment. Why is that? Because capital is disappearing at rate delta and, uh, and technology is growing at rate g and the labor force is growing at rate n. So to maintain the same level of little kt over time, you need to have at least this much investment, okay? So if we have more investment than this level, then we're actually going to increase our little kt. This little kt dot is gonna be positive. If we have less investment per unit of human capital uh, than this amount, then we're gonna have a negative little k, k dot t, okay? So that means that the amount of little kt is falling, okay? so. How can we draw this s of uh, little yt? Well, if you can recall, little yt is just some concave function. And then s is a number between zero and one. It's the fraction that we save or the fraction that we invest. So uh, that's gonna be sort of scaling down this concave function in this way. Okay, and since we've assumed, recall, the properties of this production function that we asked for is that the slope uh, close to zero is infinity, and that the slope close to infinity is zero. Okay, so we know that at some point, this concave function is going to cross this break-even investment line. Okay, because of those assumptions, now you see why we asked for those properties when we were uh, at the very beginning of the, uh, of the lecture. So we know that there's going to be some... Uh, equilibrium here. Moreover, since we've also assumed that this function is strictly concave, um, there can only be one crossing. Because if there are two crossings, at some point, this would have to slope up again. Um, and then we would have a section of this curve where it's not concave, right? So where's our equilibrium in this model? It's the point where little k does not change or in other words, to the point where little k dot t is equal to zero. Uh, and you can see that that will be where s of y t is equal to delta plus g plus n times little k t. So in other words, the point where these two lines cross. Okay. What happens if we start off of equilibrium? We start with a little k t level here. Okay, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have more investments than we have uh, then break-even investment, so we're going to move this direction as time goes by. Here, we're going to have more, uh, less investment than break-even investment if we start here. Say we start here. Not a great straight line, but there you go. We're going to actually move this direction. So we're always going to be moving times little k uh, star in this case. Moreover, you can see that the amount we move, so the amount we move is like the difference between these two lines. So the amount we move is actually getting smaller as we get closer and closer to little k star t. So we're approaching little k star t from either side. And in fact, I bet we could prove I'm sure it's true, and I bet we can prove that we're never going to have the situation where we actually jump from one side to the other, so that when we're close to k star t, the distance between these two lines is actually always smaller than the uh, distance it would take to jump from the level of capital we're at here to the other side of this uh, line. Would that be trivial? 
think it's trivial because I think that if you have a horizontal line, then that would take you exactly up to this point. Is that right? I don't know, but something that I think we could prove if we needed to. Um, you know, if I were writing a textbook, I'd say I leave this as an exercise. <laughs> I, I don't think it's tough, but uh, I have to think about it for a minute. Okay, so now we've got the equilibrium. So let's think about some properties of this balanced growth path or the steady state uh, of this economy. Okay, so we want to know how fast does the economy grow? All right, so in other words, we want to know how fast does, say, output grow or how, how fast does output per unit of human capital grow? Or how much does output per worker grow? Those are all questions we can ask. So let's recall that this is constant in equilibrium. All right, so what's the de definition? I've written this several times now, but what's the de definition of little kt? It's big kt, the capital stock, divided by the human capital stock, if you like. Okay, so the physical capital stock divided by the human capital stock. This thing in equilibrium is constant, okay? But this quantity down here, it's actually growing at the rate n plus g. How do I see that? Well, recall that um, I'll just write this in another in another way. You know, at lt is exogenously equal to a zero l zero plus g t oh plus n t right we derive this ah I screwed it up because there should be logs there excuse me let me let me put it this way a t times l t is equal to a zero l zero there's no logs uh, times so this is a times now the x uh, e to the power n t times e to the power g t okay right that's we derived that a couple slides ago all right, since we have uh, a couple of powers, we can add them. So that's going to be equal to, I'll try to write it a little smaller here, a0, l0 times e to the power n plus g times t. Okay, so we can say that this whole quantity here, at times lt, it grows at the rate n plus g. Right? This is kind of our definition of a growth rate. Uh, so, yeah. So, at times lt grows at the rate n plus g. Little kt is constant in, in the on the balanced growth path. So that means that k must be growing at rate n plus g. Okay. So we've derived now that capital must be growing at rate n plus g on the balanced growth path, this one here. Okay. By constant returns to scale, right, we've assumed that... Uh, Again, let me pause this to collect my thoughts here. Let me have to pause it for a second. Um, let me not write little yt because that's not the right way to think about it. So you'll recall that big yt is equal to f of kt, at, lt. Okay, that's our production function. Okay, so this is the very beginning. This is how we started this chapter. So if big Yt is equal to this thing, and we know how fast ATLT is growing, it's growing at rate g plus n or n plus g. We know how fast KT is growing. We just derived that. That's growing at rate n plus g. So it means that since we have constant returns to scale, this whole thing is growing at rate n plus g. Okay. This thing's growing at rate n plus g. This thing's growing at rate n plus g. Since both are expanding at the same rate, then yt must also be expanding at the same rate because of constant returns to scale. You know, if you like, we could I could make that growth factor explicit. We have a0 l0 times uh, e to the n plus g times t. So I could write this as a0 l0 e to the n plus g times t. I could also write this as k0 times e to the n plus g times t. So since we're multiplying both side, both factors by e to the n plus g times t, 
then I can take that on the outside and write yt as y0 times e to the n plus g times t. Okay, so that's another way of sort of showing that maybe slightly more formally. Okay, so that's how we get this. Okay, now let's think about yt divided by lt. Okay, well, we know that yt is growing at rate n plus g, and lt is growing at rate n. So using a similar argument here, maybe we'll just make it explicit, yt divided by lt is equal to y0 times e to the power n plus g t, l0 times e to the power n t. Okay, so that's going to be equal to y0 divided by l0. And then here we can, we can, uh, we're dividing this by that. So we can actually just subtract the power. So that's going to be e to the power gt. Okay, because we've got here nt, and here we have an nt, so we're going to subtract uh, this nt from that nt, and we're going to get a zero. So we're going to end up with only gt there. So what this means is that yt divided by lt, this is like our definition of growth, uh, of exponential growth. It's growing at rate g. Okay, so in a sense, you know, yt divided by lt, that's what we care about. That's output per person, um, and that's growing at rate g. So what do we learn? In a sense, only the thing that really matters for the long run growth on the balanced growth path that the economy is going to converge to in the long run um, is going to be the growth of technology, not the growth of capital. Okay, capital is going to be just keeping up, uh, it's going to grow, but it's only going to keep up with sort of the level of human capital in the economy. If we care about, you know, suppose that human capital weren't growing at all, suppose that G was zero, so like, you know, workers' education or productivity is not growing, then in terms of output per worker, this economy is going to be stagnant. It's not actually going to grow at all. Because the number of workers is growing, the amount of capital is expanding. But if what we care about is output per worker, if you think about like consumption per worker, then, uh, then that's not going to grow at all. So the only thing that's keeping, that's making workers better over time, or if you, if you know, it's representative agent, but you know, people better off over time is the growth of technology in the long run. Okay, so I'll stop there.